it's Uncle Joe and Uncle Joe Jeeps. Yeah, it's a misty day. Hoping some of this will clear out. Because I got work to do on Gobi. Got to uh, rerun some wiring on a device I put in that I did not film. Uh, but I'll try to film the, uh, the fix, if you will, that I'll be doing. And uh, we'll get into that here in just a minute. So one thing that I want to do today is put everything from these bus bars up into this box. And then I got to decide, do I want this door to swing up or do I want it to swing down? One of the problems I have is this box here. It's going to have to move forward, which is fine. It's not nailed down right now. But um, if the door swings out, i got to have this back far enough where it can swing out. If it swings down, that's not as much of a problem, but I would probably have to have everything moved up a little bit and have that box up a little higher than I necessarily want it. So, consequently, I got myself a little bit of a dilemma. Got myself a dilemma. So what I've done so far is I've disconnected my solar. The reason why is because I don't want any power going to my Renogy 50 amp DC to DC controller. This is everything I installed over the last couple of weeks, a couple of weekends. And the way this all works is you have a DC DC controller with an MPP controller. So I have solar coming in and I have battery coming in from the Jeep. And it's gonna take those two DC inputs and it's gonna charge this battery. And uh, this is a lithium 100 amp hour battery. And I have two bus bars so I can distribute power over to this junction box, which is gonna power the fridge. And it's working great. Um, I've got a, I think it's a 60 or 70 amp fuse here. I got a 70 amp um, breaker box here. And that way I can shut off the DC, uh, the DC power from the starter battery right here. And then I can do what work I gotta do. This also comes with Bluetooth. So I have a Bluetooth module here and one inside the battery. So I can monitor how much charge I'm getting as well as how much charge I have. So I put all this on the back of my drawer system and I put this little board up here just in case I ever want to put something up there and I have to worry about it caving in and tumbling in, I should say. But I got to thinking I needed a box. So that's why I got this box. And just now I've been uh, drilling some holes in it here. I'm gonna need that for passing uh, various cables in, of course. As well as getting some air in there because that is a watertight box i want to make sure air can move back and forth i don't have a big load on this uh Renogy controller so you know i'm mainly just powering the fridge but i may want to put some uh i don't know i may want to put some charging ports or something like that in at some point and if i do that then uh you know i'll be pulling a little bit more load but i'm not going to run an inverter off of this uh, I have an inverter under my seat that I may continue to use. I don't know. The truck has an inverter as well, so I don't I don't foresee powering large loads off of it. That may change down the road. So anyway, that's what I'm working on today. Trying to get all this into a box so that uh, so that it looks nicer. I don't have to worry about stuff bumping into it, that sort of thing. So that takes care of the board. I've got the refrigerator powered up with a small jackery over there running 12 volt. And so that'll keep it powered up. But we're done as far as pulling this off. Now we're gonna go mount it onto the backing plate of this electrical box. See if we can't make it all that purdied up. <laughs> all right, so I've got it kind of mocked up here, just kind of tacked. So now I gotta go, I gotta get an extension so I can get these in there and I'm just gonna mount that 
basically like that. Then we'll go inside and we'll get the plate for the back. We'll get that all mapped out. I decided to leave the uh, bus bars underneath. They're going to be hard to get to that way, but they're already kind of intact and mounted the way I want them. Everything's tacked to it. This way I can just take the wires, bring them in, and I'm good to go. I can get with it. I got a bit of a white ring on that. That means that it's damaged a little bit and went down a little too far. So we're going to leave that like that and hope that it holds. If it doesn't, I can come along here. In fact, I may come along there, put a couple along the bottom just to be on the safe side, but it'll be all right. So, yep, we're good there. I may put a couple of more here at the top. Well, I can't put them right there, but I could put one here and one here. I'll probably put one in the middle for good measure and we'll go in, get this thing mapped out. So this is the backing plate for the box, for the electrical box. This of course DC, this is my junction box here. So this is kind of the layout. I can go up against this without any trouble because all of these leads come out of the top and bottom. So that's not going to be a problem. Somebody wants our attention. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's where I'm looking at going. By the way, you're going to see me change hats sometimes. Uh, when my head starts sweating, I like to get an older hat on. That way I got a nice, beautiful little sweat ring going. But um, anyway, this is kind of where we're going with this. And then down here will give us a little bit. Of, we could actually even drop this down, you know, and give it plenty of air and space, like, you know, around the top. That's probably what I'll do is just keep it down like this. I do have the uh fuse that's got to go down here too so this is basically going to be the layout i've tested this with some screws and it looks like i can go into this plastic without much trouble at all i was afraid i was going to have to put a piece of wood down over it and then just kind of fasten everything to wood but this looks like it might hold we'll find out i think this is going to hold pretty good all things considered So that's that. What we want to know is, is how far out these are sticking. We've got a couple that stick out a little bit, but I think, at least that is to say, I hope that we'll still be able to use that. We shall see. If we have to, we can back these out, drill some holes, and then go in, and they can just go through the box. It's not going to hurt anything if they do that. And I'm doing that then. Lay it up in there. Well, it's in. I think it's going to work out pretty good. I moved this fuse over here. I may wind up terminating over here just because it'll be easier to get to. But yeah, I think now it's just a matter of routing everything. And we'll see how it looks when I'm done. I had these little weatherproof uh, grommets, but... They barely screw in on the back side because there's just barely enough room when you stick this down. And I don't really need them. I, I was going to put it here just to kind of protect the cabling, you know, but it, it's not necessary. I may put one there just to hold it there like I did this. I may go ahead and ride the, um, or route rather, the uh, refrigerator wire through that and then that'll be a little extra protection. This, I don't think this plastic is going to be sharp enough to cut anything. So... Anyway, we're moving along. What happened to the line? So the reason I disappeared for a minute is that washer had uh, a burr on it and I'm not really sure why. Then I started panicking and I couldn't find the nut, so it's like this going, where's the nut? Where could it possibly be?
So what I went in there to do is uh, put another, actually create another longer cable. So that meant putting some lugs on. So that's kind of where we're at here. That way I don't have to worry about anything right in here. I'm probably gonna do the same thing with this, with this ground. So that way I've got plenty of room to come in here and go all the way around. So that's that. Getting there though. that starts to rattle I'll have to address that and it will why is that Captain Ron nobody knows we got to get our heat temperature probe plugged in Let's see if I got the polarity right it's only gonna plug in one way so I got the temperature sensor and the Bluetooth module plugged in I'm not plugging in this uh, this trigger for the smart alternators. I don't have one. And from what I understand from Renogy, it's not going to trigger. You can't use it to trigger when you don't have a smart alternator, which I'd seen online. Everybody said, yeah, hook that up anyway. Apparently from my uh, experiences so far, it doesn't seem to start or stop the uh, alternator charging. So we're just going to leave it off. But anyway, we just got to get that cover back on here i'm going to take this excess bluetooth cable and just bundle it up and lay it in here and uh, probably mount the bluetooth receiver right here on the side all right i think we're done as you can see everything's enclosed i think i'm going to go in the garage and hunt some double-sided tape to put that up there but by and large it's done and uh got power come in from solar as well right now it's just pulling solar but it'll pull from the alternator when it needs to that was a bit of a job probably wasn't very interesting but to show you essentially what i have going on is i have a power cable that goes from here through and all the way back to to that um this block here so that's my circuit breaker for alternator power this big cable here which splits into a positive and negative is my solar so that comes in from the solar panel which is up up there as you can see and that caps off all of my power into that Renogy unit i didn't go with red arc uh, because they are very very pricey they are very good but uh, that's a heap of money right there but uh i didn't go with victron because i needed a dc to dc controller and mpp t controller for the solar all in one unit so i needed to have two input sources uh because most of the time especially here in the summer i'm going to be pulling solar so there's no reason uh to be pulling from the battery at that point so anyway we're gonna have a box here um, i may come wind up doing a whole just one big large box here and that'll come in uh, underneath this here and give me storage and then I can still pile stuff here as long as I'm careful with what I pile there I wanted to have this area right here where I didn't have to worry about it rolling back against my uh, against my energy unit or sorting anything out or anything like that so that was the purpose of, of getting this box in here it also sticks up a little bit here so if i put anything on top of this which i probably will i don't have to worry about it rolling over into my uh, power assembly either so probably wasn't the most interesting thing but maybe it gives you some ideas about how you want to run power uh, if you want to do a house battery like i did i did a lithium house battery as i said because I think lithium's the best. It's, it can take a lot of cycles and it can give you 12 volts of power all the way down. Whereas an AGM or any type of lead acid battery is not gonna do that. They're gonna slowly start losing voltage. So anyway, you can go online and learn a lot about that. Uh, do it yourself uh, solar with Will Prouse. He's very good. Hobotech's another great site to learn about this sort of thing. But yeah, all I gotta do now is replace the cable going from the battery i have it uh well this kind of kind of a mess i have it split off and i need to have a 
just one continuous wire and I want to do it all four gauge. I got six to one point and then four to the other and I need to fix that. I was gonna do that today but this took pretty much most of my time. But uh, anyway, that's it for uh, what we're doing today. Stay tuned. If you like this video, please like it. If you have any uh, advice, put it down below. And it can be any kind of advice. It can be like, hey man, get better hats, you know, or I don't know, whatever you want to say. Tell me I'm stupid, but I'm probably going to agree with you. Anyway, take care. We'll see you on the next one.